The easiest way to get more from your CNC is tiling. Splitting a big job into smaller tiles so you can cut parts larger than your machine's table. Normally that means sliding stock through the machine and rearranging your workspace. But there's a cleaner way. It's called rotate tiling. Divide your workpiece into two sections, cut the first half, rotate the stock by 180 degrees, reattach it using simple positioning pins and cut the second half. In this video I'll show you the CAM setup, the positioning tricks I use and common mistakes to avoid so you can replicate it on any CNC. If that sounds useful hit subscribe and let's jump in. For the demonstrations we will be making these larger components for the modular workbench project and using narrow piece of plywood. As always the first step is creating the stock material for the CNC operations. After creating a new component we can start a sketch and draw a rectangle that matches the size of the plywood sheet we will be using. Then quickly overlay the stock on top of the components to make sure everything fits nicely within the sheet. Everything looks good, so next we will add positioning holes and reference points that will define the X and Y zero points when setting up the CNC operations. To do that, start a new sketch on top of the stock surface. Now add a construction line and specify the distance between the top edge and the line. This line will act as the rotation axis. Keep in mind that the distance shouldn't be greater than your CNC's work surface. If it is, the router might not reach the full tile outline. Now we can add positioning holes on both sides of the sheet. The hole diameter should match the dowel pins you will be using for positioning the workpiece. With those in place, add a small rectangular cutout at the left side, just below the construction line. The distance between the construction line and the top of the rectangle defines the y-axis position for the dowel holes. The rectangle size isn't critical. Since we will rotate the sheet 180 degrees later, we need a matching cutout on the other side, this time above the construction line. I'm using the same 20 mm spacing between the cutout and the line on both sides. That way alignment stays perfect and we avoid any ruined parts. Now we can extrude the cutouts and double holes. With the stock ready, let's align it with the components. Make sure the parts don't overlap with the double holes and that there is a little extra material left at the top. This ensures you will have enough stock for all parts. Once that's done, we select both the parts and the stock and make a copy. While copying, we rotate the sheet by 180 degrees. To prevent accidentally shifting something later, I like to make a rigid groups of each setup. That way, if we drag one component, the whole group moves together. Before we move on, it's important to double check the distance between the positioning cutout and the component edges at the top of the copied setup. Make sure everything still fits on your CNC's work area. In my case there is a slight overhang, which is an easy fix. I'll just add another set of cutouts and positioning holes to the stock, keeping the same 20 mm spacing between the dowel line and the rectangular cutout. This setup is the same logic you would use for regular tiling operations. Before jumping into the CAM workspace, there's one last thing to do. Draw the stock contours to the stock component to limit the toolpath for each tile. We start a sketch on top of the stock, then draw a line between each pair of dowel holes. Next we add a rectangular sketch where the each tile section will be. Make sure these rectangles slightly overlap. I'm adding a 10 mm overlap from each rectangle to the dowel line. Also, check the distance between the rectangle edges and your components. It should be just slightly larger than your router bit diameter. In my experience, if it's too wide, some errors 
Ganekor. We got our stock laid out, registration halls added and everything grouped. Next let's move to the CAM workspace and set up the rotate tiling operations. As with any CNC operation, the first step is defining the stock and origin point. I'm creating a new setup, selecting the stock material we designed earlier and selecting the X and Y origin at the top corner of our cutout. When tiling, the very first cut is making the positioning holes in the spoil board. So I'm selecting the contour operation and marking the top edges of the double holes. Then I can select the tool I'll be using for the operations and go to the passes section. Under the stock to leave option, I add a small 0.13 mm radial stock, ensuring a snug fit for the dowel and a negative 7 mm axial offset to cut into the spoil board. Then we can remove the lead-ins and lead-outs and add the ramping option, which ensures a clean cut. When the operation is set up, we can export the NC program and make the cuts in the spoil board. Now we can start setting up the first tiling operation. Since the stock is already selected and the origin points are set, we can start with a new 2D contour operation for the positioning holes on the first tile. This is similar to before, but we select the bottom of the holes and set a small axial offset of negative 0.3 mm. It's important that the hole cuts go all the way through the sheet, so you can align the holes and secure the material in place with the positioning pins. With the holes done, we can set up a new operation for the component outlines. Now it's important to select the stock contour we created earlier. This keeps the router inside the first tile and prevents cutting beyond the tile area. Since the parts need to stay fixed to the stock, we also add support tabs. Then we can set up the operations as usual. I won't go into the feeds and speeds in this video, you can pause to see the settings I'm using. One important tip, when doing the outside contour cuts in Fusion 360 for the tiling, skip the lead-ins. For some reason, Fusion sometimes places them outside the stock contour, which can damage your workpiece. Leaving them off avoids that. Everything looks good, so we can export the NC file and secure the workpiece to the CNC table. Since part of the sheet hangs off the table, we need extra support. I'm using a workshop stool and some offcuts to match the CNC table height. And don't forget to recalibrate the Z-axis. This prevents collisions. Once everything is set, we can run the cuts. First the double holes, then the contour cuts. As you can see, the CNC stops right at the edge of the table, which is exactly what we want. After the first tile is done, remove the workpiece, clean up the work surface and get ready for the next tile. Again, we have to start a new setup. Select the stock material from the component we copied earlier and define the new X and Y axis origin points. With that done, we have to create a new toolpath for the last positioning holes. Then we can set up the cuts for the components. Again, selecting the 2D contour option, picking the contour lines, defining the stock contour, adding the support tabs, and double checking the cut settings, including skipping the lead in and lead out options. Everything looks good, so let's load the sheet back on the CNC router, this time the other half of course. And let's watch how the machine marks the holes and cuts the component outlines.
As you watch, notice how the overlaid stock contours guide the router so the cuts meet perfectly, leaving no material between the tiles. Once the second tile is complete, we can remove the workpiece, clean up the work surface and prepare for the final operation. This one works as a regular tile, but again, we have to create a new setup. Select the stock material and define the origin point. Then we can simply set up the contour cuts, again marking the stock contour, checking the cut settings and skipping the lead-ins and lead-outs. After exporting the last NC file, we can reattach the material using the positioning holes and make the final cuts. Now all components are finished, perfectly aligned and larger than our CNC's machine's table, without ever moving the machine. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing for more CNC tips and interesting projects you can make on your CNC machine. And in case you are wondering what the components we made today are for, check out Modular Workbench video, where we create a fully customizable set that might be useful for your workshop setup. Thanks for watching, stay creative and I'll see you next time.